Hey folks, this is Ben from Atlas HR, and we're creating a quick video today on how we're using the UKG Ready platform to help our clients track employee vaccination status and weekly COVID testing to comply with the upcoming federal mandates. So UKG has released a very thorough solution for this, um, so hats off to them for that. Um, however, we have gotten feedback from quite a few clients that they're looking for a bare bones solution to stay compliant without adding new modules or costs or um, extensive configurations or anything like that. So for those clients, we came up with sol a solution that uses functionality that most companies already have, and it's fairly easy to set up and maintain. So we're using tools like uh, extra fields, HR actions, checklists, certifications, which only require the HR module. So we wanted to share our solution with other UKG partners and clients in the event that you've received similar feedback and would find this information helpful. So let's go ahead and jump in here. So. We'll start with the vaccination status, how we're tracking that. So this is, and this is what the dashboard looks like for everything. We set up a COVID mandate tracking dashboard. Um, but for vaccination status, we did a couple basic things here. So first is we set up a account extra field. We just called it COVID-19 vaccination status. And we used a lookup list with the options vaccinated, unvaccinated, and we threw exempt in there in the event that that's something that needs to be tracked separately in the future. Um, we also have a second field we might be adding called exposure level. Uh, it's unclear whether OSHA is going to change the weekly testing requirements for employees with different levels of exposure, like remote employees or employees that aren't interacting with the general public. So we don't have that in there yet, but that's something that we might be adding in if requirements are different for different groups of employees. So the next thing we added is a, uh, well, we added an HR group. So a lot of companies already have this, an HR group of approvers or designated HR staff. Um, but we added in a document type. Um, and the document type was we wanted to let employees see uh, the, the COVID-19 uh, document type, but we didn't want their managers to see it or anyone else. So this uh, document type allows the HR admin group to see the, uh, the COVID-related documents, which will be vaccine cards. Um, and it allows the employee to see it, but not their managers. So that's the purpose of this here. Created a basic workflow. A lot of companies probably already have this as well. It's a employee to HR directly to that HR approver group we created. Um, so this is what we have, but this is very basic stuff, but we like to name our workflows so it's clear what, what's happening there. And then the HR action itself. So this is a view of what the employee would see. Um, it's just a very basic HR action where we've pulled in the vaccination field, that extra field, and we've pulled in the employee document section. So uh, we have instructions up top for what they need to do. Uh, so if they've currently unvaccinated, they can change their status to vaccinated and then upload that document and select the document type. And again, the employee can see this and HR can see this, uh, but no one else. So then they'll select their vaccine their vaccination card rather uh, and upload that here and then when they submit that that will go off to HR. So the last thing we did for this uh, for the vac vaccination tracking was a checklist so once you have all your current hires submitting HR actions your, your new hires um, can do this as part of their onboarding. So in the checklist, we've we've set up basically that same HR action that we just uh, that we just looked at. That's just the one step in the checklist. So instead of incorporating this into current checklists, uh, we thought it made more sense to do a separate checklist that got assigned uh, to new hires, uh, especially companies with multiple onboarding checklists. It might be a lot of work to go in and um, edit all those checklists and then change them all back once. Uh, once this was no longer a requirement, so we just decided to keep this as its own separate checklist that would also get assigned to new hires. So that status can be tracked here, these, these two bottom reports here, uh, the vaccinated and unvaccinated, they're just basic reports, employee list reports where we filtered by uh, that particular field. Now let's talk about uh, the weekly testing. So the weekly testing, uh, we're doing this a little bit differently, we're using certifications for the weekly testing. Um, and the reason we chose certifications was the renewal term here, you can be set to seven days. Um, so that's pretty convenient for, since it is a seven day requirement. Um, so we just set up a certification called COVID-19 weekly testing and the renewal term is seven days. Didn't really set up anything else for that. And then over here on our, in the, in the learning section, we're able to 
mass add that to anyone that needed it. So the nice thing is you can mass add that and filter your uh, employees that you're adding it to. So we used our COVID-19 vaccination status column here to filter out just the unvaccinated folks that require weekly testing. So once we added that to everyone, um, or the folks that required it rather, then we started creating some uh, reports to, to view um, you know, expired tests and recently uh, completed tests, things like that. Uh, but before we look at those, I wanna talk about how this would be maintained. So if I'm a manager and I'm maintaining a group of employees, um, then all, all that needs to be done here is uh, when an employee gets tested, um, they can select that employee or a group of employees, um, and then they come over here and click Add History. By clicking, by entering a completion date, uh, it resets that seven day uh, expiration uh, cycle. So I can put in a completion date of today on Jennifer Jones here, and I can say she has a grade of negative, so she had a negative test on 927. I can click Add. Uh, and then we'll refresh this view and then she drops off my COVID test expired view. Um, and it will automatically reset that expired date to one week after the completion date. Uh, and so the nice thing is you can set up uh, expiration notifications based on, you know, one day prior or the day of or whatever time frame uh, you want to use. Uh, so you can get an email if someone's test has ex weekly test has expired. Um, what we've tried to do instead is uh, use the dashboards. Um, so, because if you have a lot of employees, you could be getting a ton of emails and that might, uh, that might get difficult to maintain. So we've tried to use the dashboards to maintain this. So we, we created three reports here. There's COVID tests expired, completed, and then expiring today or tomorrow. So the expired one is pretty straightforward. It's just filtered by um, expir expired equals yes. Um, the completed recently is filtered by the expiration date is greater than tomorrow, um, which is not, not, not necessarily recently. That could be, uh, since it's a week expiration, it's, that, that could be technically recently. Um, and then the expiration date uh, today or of today or tomorrow. So we put a filter in of between today or tomorrow. Um, so you could get a view on, on anything that's immediately uh, a priority. Uh, and all of those lists are filtered by just unvaccinated folks. So as soon as you switch someone over to uh, vaccinated, they will no longer show up on these reports. Uh, and one of the cool things is you can jump in and view the, uh, the history on any employee here and just see all of their tests and their grades. Um, and one thing to note, if you have an employee that has a positive test, what we recommend doing is is uh, clicking, adding the history, but not adding in the date. So if I want to say, you know, Henry here has had a positive test, I can click add history and then just put in um, positive. So it adds that into the history, but it does not reset his expiration date since we wouldn't want to do that since he would not be, uh, you wouldn't want him showing up as eligible to work at that point. And then when he has a negative test, you can go add that in it with the completion date. So let's jump back to our dashboard here. So we have those three reports um, set up on the dashboard. So a manager or HR staff uh, could easily get a quick view of everyone that falls into each category and then also jump into those reports uh, if they needed to go enter some information. You know, let's say Peter and, and Mitch here got tested. I can, I can do this fairly quickly in mass. That's kind of an important thing there too and enter a grade, and then it's done. So the, the idea here is that this is something that can be maintained fairly quickly without a lot of, uh, a lot of busy work for managers. So um, let me jump back to our dashboard here, and we can see how our, our COVID test expired view dropped down to just one person. All right, so that's, that's kind of the, the solution we are using for clients who want a bare bones uh, a bare bones solution, not a lot of uh, extra modules or costs. Um, and we hope that is helpful to some of you folks uh, that are, are getting the same feedback. And feel free to ask questions if you want to. And, and for those uh, who are part of some of the forums that we'll, we'll be dropping this video in, we will also attach a PDF with some of the details uh, that we've set up here. So that concludes our walkthrough. And thanks and have a good day.